My name is Gary Bredo, and I'm a documentary filmmaker and an entrepreneur. The economy is in less than perfect shape, and when the jobs go away, there's nothing left to do but get up and get creative. And there are people all over America doing just that. It's estimated that up to 85% of new businesses fail. So I'm going coast to coast to hear the personal stories of the people who beat the odds and started a successful business from the ground up. This is Startup. The entrepreneurial spirit is alive and well. In Walsh College's business launch entrepreneurial community, consultants provide advice to aspiring business starters. More information available online. The Chevrolet Volt, an everyday electric car with gas for longer trips. The nature of things to come. Oh, Chevrolet, find new roads. American Express is proud to support startup and the millions of small businesses that put in the hard work to be open for business in neighborhoods across the country. I'm just outside Cleveland, Ohio, and we're gonna to talk to Jason Ween, who created Cleveland Art. Now, although Jason says that he may have struggled a bit in school, he's at the top of his class when it comes to repurposing materials into beautiful art and antiques. Let's go find out how this guy went from garbage picking to selling to some of the top designers in the world. The furniture industry has morphed into a diverse and dynamic manufacturing sector. Custom makers are creating innovative pieces of furniture that combine everything from repurposed materials to new and modern designs. Jason Ween is a self-declared garbage picker whose artistic eye and reimagined furnishings caught the attention of popular international retail companies and is solidifying his place in the global design industry. So we're gonna start at the, at the very beginning. As a child, I have really bad dyslexia, and school's really challenging for me. And my interest was always, from the beginning of time, junk. And um, as I got older, I started working on cars. I started buying and selling cars at the age of 13. I had an art teacher who just told me how sexy and beautiful and wonderful it was to be an artist. And he really inspired me to take my mechanical abilities into um, a career. This business evolved because I, I was um, um, too dumb to follow the rules in class, but too smart not to follow my own bliss. My, my first big break was I was buying from this guy named Winston Willis, and I'd bought some bathtubs from him, and on the front of his building had this beautiful wrought iron and these terracotta, which is baked clay urns. So I'm doing a demo salvage after I paid him $500 to disassemble the front of this building that was collapsing. And the historical society said, this is a historical, but you have to stop. So I go to Winston, I'm like, Winston, give me my $500 back. He said, oh, you have to pick something else out. So I see a room of old movie projectors. So I went to the library and took photographs of what I had and some photographs to auction houses and to movie prop studios. And I sold eight of the 14 projectors for $8,000 and I bought my first antique store. So where, where, did it, where did it go from there? Was the store successful and what was the progression? Well, well the store was successful at the time because mm -hmm. we had the real estate and was able to sell to bring it to another level. But Cleveland in the Midwest is a little bit conservative of an area. So we were forced to sell in New York and California. California was really foreign to me where, you know, New York, I, I feel like I'm from New York because I've spent so much time there. So I really had to do research, architectural digest, who's the hottest shops in LA and we would send them photographs, and we had a following before we opened our store there. According to federal government trade laws, an antique is an item over 100 years old, though many collectors describe items over 50 years old as vintage or collectible. Uh, where are we right now? What is this place? What are we gonna be doing here today? Um, this is the Van Dorn Ironworks. What we're doing is we're salvaging the wood the beams that we're salvaging were 1,500 to 2,000 year old trees, and all those trees were deforested. So we're getting the floor beams um, from the building out to turn and repurpose into furniture. All the pieces we do tell a story, and, yeah. that, and that's why people allow us to do what we do. 
what we do is archival. Our furniture will outlast a nuclear bomb and outlast probably humanity. We, we really, quite often people have a special project and they want a special table and I'm like, listen, if you don't like it, you don't have to pay for it and we'll build it. And they've always, I, I can't remember someone saying they didn't like something we build on speculation. So it's amazing when you see a ruin like this and you see the moss growing that the building really turns back to nature. Some of the things I really, we look for is these bubble joints, how they were made. Mm -hmm. These were probably made at the Van Doren Ironworks. We actually use these on our structures to build our tables. You just don't see fittings like this. We don't build fittings in America anymore. They're all been exported overseas. So when you see little interesting pieces like this, it really inspires me. If you, if you look up in the rafters where this space is open, yeah. there was originally flooring. You can still see where some of it is left. But in these big I-beams you see here were these big pine wooden beams. What makes a person want to do this with their life? It was an obsession as a child. It started um, by embarrassing my parents, walking the dog, picking bicycles out of the garbage, antiques lawn mowers, and it just evolved. When I was 16, I would take my dates to old abandoned buildings, and I was just obsessed with just getting little parts and pieces. And, and then um, one day I just started, um, I moved into the old White Motors truck factory as a workshop space. Um, at the time I was carving wood, and um, I just t took the old carts and just built furniture out of everything that was around. And as quick as we did it, people started buying it. We went to the New York flea market once in the early 90s and we did Versace and Prada showrooms because they loved our aesthetic so much. And we were really doing industrial before industrial was cool to do. I just loved it and I didn't have any money and so I just used old junk. But so. at the end of the day, you're just, you're just a maker at heart. I just love to build. I love the whole experience, it, you know, the organic experience of finding something and figuring out what you can do with it. and and. What, what it could be and to see the beauty in, in something that most people would, wouldn't look twice at. The, the greatest piece we built is usually the next piece that's going to come out. We, we have a really talented crew. Everyone's excited about what they do. Yeah. And it's always evolving and changing with the materials and figuring out better ways to do it. And it's just the evolutionary process. Uh, what is it that your, I guess, your business philosophy or the best piece of advice you could give to someone who is, uh, I'll say, uh, you know, not literally, but figuratively stuck in school? When you work for yourself, everything always needs to evolve and get better and change. And the day you stop evolving and changing is the day you should think about an exit strategy and getting out of business. Right. It's always a challenge. People always say, oh, you know, it must be great working for yourself and having your own business. And the first thing I say is, I hate my boss. He makes me work too much, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and it's you. So, and it's me, of course. But, you know, they, they call it work for a reason. Whatever you do, you have to really understand that what work means. The essence of work is working. No, no one's going to give you anything. And if your dreams are of doing nothing, better marry someone rich. Although it may have taken Jason a number of years to iron out his business, Cleveland Art is setting design trends all over the world. And it doesn't take a PhD to figure out that if you're doing what you love for a living, that's what really defines success. For more information, log on to our website and click the link for Cleveland Art. Visit our website at startup-usa.com and like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. What, what, uh, what do you call organic food? What did they call organic food in 1950? No idea. Food. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. American Express is proud to support Startup and the millions of small businesses that put in the hard work to be open for business in neighborhoods across the country. The Chevrolet Volt, an everyday electric car with gas for longer trips. The nature of things to come. Oh, Chevrolet, find new roads. The entrepreneurial spirit is alive and well in Walsh College's business launch entrepreneurial community. 
consultants provide advice to aspiring business starters. More information available online.